are so honored that you're here with us for season three. We want to share, connect, and grow the paper flower community with you. Welcome to Paper Talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Paper Talk. Today, we have Christina Funderberg with us. And if you don't know her yet, you'll know her soon enough. She is one of our team members in our Facebook group, and she's been helping our other admins, Stephen, Susan, Jerry, and Sue, with managing our Facebook group. But also, she's going, well, she is this this month, the guest artist helping Susan with the tutorial for the Landers Poppy. So pretty. And yeah, <laughs> I so love it. <laughs> it's the tutorial's up. So make sure you guys check it out. Christina has a business called Flourish Paper Flowers, and she's from Dallas, Tex- Texas. And Christina, we're just thrilled to have you here with us. This is actually the first time that I've met you virtually in person. So it's yes. really nice to finally be able to say hi to you after seeing your name pop up everywhere. <laughs> and <laughs> although I know Quinn's okay. been working with you and you've been working with her on the posy box. So that's fantastic. So let's start. Um, Christina, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where are you? I mean, you're obviously from Dallas, Texas, but you know, t- uh, what drew you to paper flowers and what made you want to dive right in? For like, for a lot of us, I actually started doing paper flowers for my wedding about a year and a half ago. I just wanted to have something different. Um, I've always been a crafty DIY person person. So I wanted to kind of have that be a big part of my wedding. So I was just like, I've got to make flowers out of paper. And, you know, I was really drawn to the book page roses and things like that. So I just like hopped on to the Leah Griffith website, found her like simple rose pattern and made tons of them for the wedding. <laughs> like it was, it was probably like 90% roses and then the rest of it was like a few peonies here and there and then and then leaves and like that was it. It was just all roses because like this is the fastest thing I can do. I don't want to have to <laughs> learn like 10 different flowers. I'm just going to make roses for everything. <laughs> Did you have a summer wedding? Uh, it was actually in the spring. It was in April. It was late April. So yeah, it was. for the roses yeah. and peonies. <laughs> right. So it was not seasonally accurate at all, but mm-hmm. you know. That's the great thing about paper yeah, flowers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but what it, book did you use to create your paper roots? Uh, so I actually found the pattern on the Leah Griffith website. I did not have a book at that point. Oh, okay. So it was it was her frosted paper. Oh no, no. Pattern. I meant um, yeah. the book that you chose with all the papers used to make the paper flowers. Because I've done weddings oh. where they use like Harry Potter pages to create. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the funny story behind this is that I didn't have a plan of a book. Like I, because I love books and I didn't want to cut up one of mm-hmm. like my favorite books. Like yeah. I would just have this like really sad uh, emotional attachment to doing that. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. went to our local like book resale place, Half Price Books, and I found just like on their clearance shelf like a three dollar book that was like super thick so it had a ton of paper in it and it had Love like that. good paper quality like the yeah. actual like book page paper not that yeah. really smooth like magazine stuff like they're trying yeah. to do now so like I just I was like I just need a book that has a lot of paper in it because I'm just after the look like it doesn't need to have that like <laughs> nobody needs to read it yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that book was actually an Anne Rice book. I don't know if you're familiar with her. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I had to kind of be strategic with how I placed everything because you know, some of those pages get really explicit and I was not making attention to them out. That is hilarious. So oh my yeah, gosh. it was fun. Um, so my, my husband would have a question. What did you do with the paper of roses after the wedding? So I actually kept a few of them. I didn't keep all of them. I actually have a few in my house still on this ledge here. I actually have a couple of pieces that I used for the centerpieces. Oh, for pretty. Our, yeah. I Aww. love them. Like, I know the people on the podcast can't see it, but you I guys know. can. <laughs> it's so Gorgeous. pretty. Yes, it's so pretty. I love how you kept it. So I have I have two of those. And then I actually created shadow boxes with some photos from the wedding and my husband's boutonniere and a few of the flowers from the wedding. The rest of them, I just... I either gave to other people or I scrapped them. Mm -hmm. Um, I still have my bouquet that I made. I still have to figure out a good way to store that. I'm not entirely sure how to do that, but I do have it still. (laughs) My husband was so mad. We made, well, we made over a thousand paper cranes. And then after the wedding, I was like, I'm done with it. And it was, we did our wedding in Los Angeles. We actually had to travel. And so I just didn't want to take it home with me. And he's like, 
but what are you going to do? We spent all this time making them. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> well, but that's the thing, especially with something like origami, like there's no glue, there's no wire. So you could just like recycle it and be like, yeah, somebody else can make these now. <laughs> yep, exactly. I gave them to my, like my nieces and nephews and they, ha- they had a great time playing with them. I was like, that was a great way to repurpose it for me. <laughs> I had to keep a, a few. We kept it in our photo album. So it's still there. But not, you know, over a thousand. Because I think we made like 1600 or something. Like that. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> you could have given one to each of your guests or two. Well, we did. So we gave a little, I made a little ornament that, so we, so I'm Vietnamese and one of my favorite drinks is um, Vietnamese coffee. Mm. And so I gave him a little tiny glass and also a coffee filter. I don't know if you've seen the Vietnamese, but it comes in a little metal filter and you the top. The, yeah, with the, you put the coffee ground in and you squeeze through in the top, put boiling water in and it just drips and they have this mm-hmm. really super concentrated mm-hmm. and that's the gift. And then we also gave, we tied it with um, like a little organza bag so you can kind of see through. And then we yeah. tied a little ornament with a, a tiny little crane on top of Aww. it. And so it's, it's super cute. <laughs> it is and, cute. But it was just very time consuming. But we did give everybody one. That's why the number is like 100. I mean, <laughs> you know, overachiever. <laughs> oh, I feel that. I feel that so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so then after, I guess, after you caught the paper flower bug from your wedding, what mm-hmm. made you decide, you know what, I'm just going to keep on this. And how did you find crepe paper? Because your wedding paper was made of book paper. Yeah. So with the uh, the progression from that was I was still kind of subscribing to Leah Griffith and like looking at her stuff. And then she started kind of verging more towards the crepe paper. And I was like, all right, it does look more realistic. I want to try it and just see. So I like bought a couple of her packs and like started working with it and kind of just enjoyed the process of like figuring out, okay, well, you know, if I cut these shapes, this is what it makes. And this is really cool because I can actually like mold and shape the paper in a way that I couldn't with the other. So yeah, it was just kind of a natural progression, just kind of based off of her transition from the pearlescent paper to crepe. So I kind of like followed her through that. And then Mm -hmm. I actually had met Susan through that group, talked to her, and she was the one that had suggested the Paper Florist Collective Facebook group for me to join and the Posy Box as well. Because I had asked her, I was like, okay, well, you know, you get to a certain point with the Lee Griffith stuff and and I love her for this, but she she kind of focuses more towards the beginner, you know, so she makes everything very simple for people to pick up. And that's great for anybody that's wanting to, you know, jump in head first and learn these things. But at some point you're kind of like, okay, well, I've kind of taken this as far as I can go and I need to learn other techniques and other coloring process and things like that. So I I had asked Susan, I was like, how can I, you know, grow my skills and, you know, expand my skill set to actually like push this out as a business? And she's like, okay, well, check out this group, check out the posy box. And, you know, (laughs) and that I swear to you, like those two things just completely changed my game for paper flower. Yay. So, and your paper flowers are beautiful. Thank you. You have a very natural talent. And it's just <laughs> amazing to see your progression because clearly you just got married a year and a half ago and you look at your flowers like this girl's been in the business for under two years. <laughs> it's like, wow, <laughs> she's going to get big. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you will. Awesome. You will. <laughs> I love it. Do you, do you have a background in fine arts at all? Or was this something like, um, you had mentioned that you had been crafty all your life. You did a lot of DIY. Tell us a little bit about that. I've been a crafter since I was probably maybe 10 years old, maybe eight. And I've worked with all kinds of stuff. I've done you know, polymer clay. I've done painting. I've done jewelry making. Like anything that you can imagine that's in that kind of DIY crafty realm, like sand art, all that kind of stuff. I, I've done it. Origami, you name it. Mm-hmm. I've, I've done it at least a few times to try it out. I actually was really big into art in high school and I actually got my bachelor's degree in graphic design. So oh. yeah, so I am I almost I'm made very, it there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a creative person. <laughs> And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I'm now actually using my graphic design knowledge for my paper flowers, you know, Mm -hmm. so like doing the website and, you know, doing these posts and, you know, video editing and all this stuff that I learned in school, like I'm actually able to apply that now. Whereas like my current job, like I'm just like, 
I do software support, so it's no. not as uh, not as exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, it it is what it is, and you know, and and I do a little bit of social media work for them as well. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of verging away, you know, and kind of getting my own direction in that as well. But, but yeah, so I've always been a creative person, and this is just like a great way for me to get for that sure. creative outlet. It's mm-hmm. always yeah. fascinating hearing where people come from mm-hmm. because honestly, like all of your experience, whether you think it's relevant or not, like goes into what you're doing now. And like you said, it's funny that you know, it kind of circles around and suddenly you're actually using the skills or the knowledge that you've learned before where you, you know, for a long time might not have used them, but they come back, you know, they're never a waste. So mm-hmm. that's, yeah, so interesting. Uh, tell us a little bit about Flourish Paper Flowers. How did you choose that name? Where did it come from? And your logo. Your logo is beautiful. It totally fits you. For the name, I, like, I kind of was trying to think of something like snappy and catchy, you know, and I was like, okay, well, like I want it to be something that's like, well, it's like flower like it's not really flowers because they're not real. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so flower like flower ish. And then I was like, oh yeah, I could do a play on words of flourish and use the French word for flower. So it's fleur ish, you know, love it. So everybody recognize what fleur is. It's very mm-hmm. common now. So yeah. yeah, good job on that. Yeah. <laughs> did you design the logo yourself? I did. Uh, yeah. I no wonder it's all you. Time. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah. it's so rare to see people use black, but you used it in a very effective way and it makes your flower out so well. I love it. Yeah. I, I tend to wear a lot of black um, and like all of my furniture is black in my house. So like, oh, wow. it's just like, yeah, it's, it's just this like, color that I gravitate towards Mm -hmm. and especially when I'm doing photography of my flowers like I think the black just makes everything pop a little bit more than Mm -hmm. doing the white background or gray background I I, you know I'm sure that there are probably good applications for that I just haven't come across them yet (laughs) in what I do (laughs) so um, I'm, I'm trying to keep with the black and just make that part of my branding. For so sure. If you look at a picture on Instagram and it's got a black background, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's Christina's. You know, mm-hmm. like that's that's kind of what I'm trying to do with that. I'm still playing with my backdrops. I'm not entirely sure what I have right now is working. <laughs> <laughs> I may need to get some black fabric instead because right now I'm, I'm basically using like foam core boards with contact paper on them. <laughs> that works. Um, <laughs> And I actually, and this is where my, my, my work, my actual job was helpful with this is that we actually work in CAD. So I designed these little like corner bracket pieces to like hold the, the foam core together. Nice. So I can actually just like stand it up on my table and take pictures mm. without having to like find books or boxes or stuff to stand things up against. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was really, it was really cool. And then I was able to get those machined at my boss's house because he has a CNC machine. So cool. I actually have those made out of wood and yeah, it's really cool. So That's useful. <laughs> <laughs> Very useful. <laughs> So with your one year or year and a half of being in the paper flower world, you moved progressively a lot faster than a lot of people I've seen. What Mm -hmm. made you push so hard? And also, how did you find your steps to be where you're at now? Well, I think part of it has to do with just my my knowledge of different art mediums already, kind of going from that background into, you know, applying it to paper flowers. And then, you know, obviously like, learning techniques through the posy box and from Inga and Susan and, you know, all these people that have built up this, you know, huge realm of tutorials that you guys didn't have when you started, you know, so that, that has helped me progress really quickly being able to see, oh, well, this is what these people are doing now. Oh, I know how to do that. I know how to paint things. You know, I know how to use, you know, markers with a really light hand to get that detail work, you know, so that definitely helped me. It was just kind of the the matter of learning the different mediums that I could use on the crepe paper without messing it up. And I think that's one thing that a lot of the newer paper florists don't understand is that they think that, oh, well, if I put anything with water in it, it's just going to completely damage the paper. And it's not, that's not the case. Like it's pretty sturdy. Yeah. It's really amazing. So, what we call one technique Wendy developed was washing the crepe paper, mm-hmm. the doublet, and just blending colors together. We now like we have several <laughs> tutorials. <laughs> Sorry, she learned it from someone. Oh, she did? <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so awesome. I did not know. It's okay. No worries. <laughs> Jesse, take credit yeah, for that. <laughs> It's in my book. It's everything. It's in my book. Yeah. It was one of the first things that I did. You know why? Because one of my inspirations is Livia Chetty. Yeah. And she bleaches her paper. She washes her paper. And Mm -hmm. so that was one of the first things that I did. And I talked about it. I'm pretty sure I talked about it in the group and in my Instagram. Mm -hmm. And you know, Wendy, like Wendy and I talk all the time about techniques. So she was the first though to call it washing. I I still Mm -hmm. call it dip dyeing because to Mm -hmm. me, it was just still you know, you're dipping in water and you're still dying it. Mm-hmm. But she was the first one to call it washing. But yeah, so, but no, it's a great technique. I love it. We've taken the posy box, taken it like and run off with it. Yeah. We've mm-hmm. microwaved it. We put it in drying yeah. racks. We blend colors. It's been really yeah. fun. I love that technique. It's just mm-hmm. taking that step and not it's do easy. It's so easy. It's easy. And you can control the water, which is really fun. And just seeing it warp and then taking it out, cutting it and then reforming it again. It doesn't lose its crepe. It's yeah. super fabulous. I love it. If you guys haven't tried it yet, can Jesse Butch tutorial do you think it's under? Uh, I'm trying to remember. So if you have my Distant Drums online course, that's done there. And that was a, from a couple of years back. In my book, I'm trying to remember. I used I so many times. Tra- oh, it was just like, front with the yeah, t- it's in the front techniques. because I use it for my ranunculuses. So my ranunculuses, I tried showing different ways of changing the color up, whether it's water bleach or doing the washing as well. So it's in there. Those That's for the doublet, I believe. I'm mm-hmm. trying to remember. I'm trying to take a look at my flowers. There were so many in there. I'm sorry, yeah. I don't remember. But no. it's, it's yeah, book, it's, it's, in the, it's in the beginning somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Have yeah, that book is done amazing. It? Has oh, anybody thanks. washed 180? Does it work yeah. the same way? A lot of people do. Mm-hmm. A lot of people wash the one. I mean, we. What, do you mean like wash as in just apply it in water or to mix the colors together? Because I think pe- people have done both. And I generally do. I generally don't mix because I don't find it particularly. Mm-hmm. I don't find it very helpful for myself. But yeah, with water, for sure. That's from Lynn. Uh-huh. Lynn used to do that all the time or she probably yeah. still does do that all mm-hmm. the time. Yeah, that's very um, true. Yeah. yeah. So I think like. To be honest, our Facebook group is amazing. Like everyone yes. talks about techniques that that people used to just do themselves, but haven't shared it. So everyone has like the knowledge of pretty much everyone. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Like all the big <laughs> names use the same techniques. So yep. like Tiffany Turner uses the lamination, like that's yep. become like a very general, like everyone uses, everyone does it now, right? Exactly. We laminate with yep. blue, we laminate yep. with fusible webbing, we laminate with spray glue. Like it's practically become like, the normal thing, which yeah. was not normal three years ago when we started. Like it was not, but now everyone is doing it. But I think the most obvious thing on our Facebook group is that I'm like blown away by how everyone has just taken these techniques and like their level of artistry is yeah. so much higher than what ours yeah. was when we started. <laughs> I was like, damn, like I didn't come across these techniques until later in my practice when I was like, oh, maybe I should do this. But now people are like right off the bat using these techniques that have been very successful for a lot of us. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because now there's so many tutorials already showing people how to do it. And they've already cut off the research part and just like, here's the technique that works. And yeah, it's been really amazing. I love it. And and as a fairly newer paper florist, like that is, you know, having that wealth of knowledge and especially with the Facebook group that we're, you know, all a part of, like everybody in that group is so willing to talk about their process, Mm -hmm. you know, and share information. And that's the one thing that I love about it is, you know, there is no like proprietary, like this is my technique, you Mm -hmm. know, you can't use it. It's mine. Yeah. You know, so, you know, some of that also is like, I think if you teach it, like you can't expect to keep it. That's, Mm -hmm. that's not fair. Right. Yeah. Like that's the trade off. (laughs) The trade off (laughs) is if you teach it because someone's paying you to teach them something, you can't expect to own that technique in any way. I, 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 it's going to evolve. It's going to move and change. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the things that I remember where I learned it from, maybe it didn't even come from those people. I don't know. Right. But now like the techniques are everywhere. So I don't, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't even think you take ownership, even like I, and I also don't think with like washing, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's like a, something that is so crazy, like that nobody could think about it. Yeah, you could, because if you put it in water, like you put everything in water, it's going to, Mm -hmm. that's going to happen. So someone 
surely maybe they never even thought about it, like never heard about it, but they mm-hmm. did it themselves. Like I went, yeah. and I, I know there's probably a few things that I've come up with and I was like, Oh yeah, this is a really cool way to do this. And it's like, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the first person that's thought about <laughs> doing it. <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, like I'm not, I'm not going to take ownership of that. And just be like, yeah, like this is, this is a thing that I did. I don't know if I'm the first one to do it, but if I am, yeah. cool, if not, Let's talk about your role in the Facebook group. So your role is resource lady. And yeah. I love that you've taken over some of the old information updated, which we really need. The group has grown so large. And I just love the fact that you're kind of cleaning up all the different tutorials and you're doing the banners, which is really fun. And um, what else are you doing for the group? So, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly um, keeping up with and, and updating the list of uh, paper florist resource books. So if anybody comes out with a new book on how to make them or a new like photo resource like the accidental botanist or, you know, things like that, I try to keep that up to date. Or if somebody sends me a suggestion, I'll add that to the list. And then just keeping up with the list of our paper flower tutorials. So they're all in one place. So if you're like, oh, well, you know, I, I really missed doing the vintage rose from back in June. Where do I find that? You know, that was one of the things that we had a problem with before we switched over to the new, the new group is that like, we would post these things and then it was just like, it would kind of disappear Mm -hmm. (laughs) because nobody knew where to go and where to click. So keeping that all compiled. um, And then I'm actually working on a couple of other lists. And if you guys want to help me with that, that would be awesome. I'm trying to come up with a list of like favorite tools of the trade. So oh, like yes, Quinn, we're really working yeah, on that. Like your, <laughs> your, uh, your wire clippers and, you know, your, the, the Kai scissors and, you know, your favorite brand of glue stick and, you know, all of this stuff. And then trying to find like the best place to get it, you know, wh- whether that's like the spun cotton balls, like, okay, well, where can I find the best price for this item? I actually stumbled upon yes, just yesterday, I stumbled on a place that sells the design master sprays for dirt cheap, like Ooh. $5 and 50 cents cheap. That's awesome. Uh, and it's actually like a floral florist like wholesaler type floral of supply place. syndicate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not that one. It's actually uh-huh. like floral direct, I think, or direct floral, something mm-hmm. like that. That must be local to Texas. Right. Mm-mm. It was. It's online. World uh, I think they're in like Ohio, actually. Ooh. So I can send you the link to that. I sent it over to Susan last night. We were talking about it. <laughs> nice. But that is um, that is a trick, though. I mean, like looking mm-hmm. at your floral wholesaler because they do carry they do mm-hmm. carry the sprays cheaper. Mm-hmm. Yes. Than retail mm-hmm. and more colors. Uh, and more yes. Lines. More lines for sure. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, Quinn and I, we, we were talking <laughs> to Design Master, like Jody and Gretchen about like the availability of it. Unfortunately, my, I mean, Michael's is everywhere, but unfortunately they don't have a whole line. Yeah, and they're phasing it out. Yeah. So your floral supplier might be the only place to get like, the entire line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the same, and, the, and it's the same with, you know, getting the the little like Holly Chapel like pillows for arranging and the, you know, the floral wire for that, you know, it's not, it's not quite chicken wire. I can't remember what they called it, but it's, it's more of like a grid wire. Oh, the Holly Chapel egg? No, not the egg, the, just the actual like wire that you can build the the thing out of. I'm Mm -hmm. not, I don't remember what it's called. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, They do call it floral wire. Yeah. Some of them are coded Mm -hmm. and the coded Mm -hmm. ones you can only buy from floral wholesalers mm-hmm. yeah but yeah. i mean you don't have to because we don't deal with water right, right. so you could just use the chicken wire that you can get at home depot super cheap you guys yeah. yeah yeah the only thing is be careful when you're doing this because it might scratch up your like you're bending it your yeah mm-hmm. when you're bending it it might like scratch your compote or your vase mm-hmm. just be a bit, a bit careful with that with the plastic wrapped ones they're a little bit softer and a little bit they're not as like they're not as sharp on the edges so mm-hmm. they're a little bit easier to use but i haven't been able to get one i haven't been able to in canada in ontario i haven't been able to find a non wholesaler that sells that mm-hmm. and the only wholesaler that sells it in my area is like has a minimum which Mm. doesn't work for me yeah so i just you know you just you know i think like for our craft we just we don't have to use whatever the quote-unquote right thing is just use whatever you want it doesn't matter honestly there's no right way to do and i i think that's the greatest thing about our art is that it's new it's not traditional we're not bounded by any rules by any tradition (laughs) by any way any way of doing it screw it just do whatever you want and you know i i think that's even better 
Yeah. You're inventing something new, yeah. like literally inventing something yeah. new. Uh, one tip I want to give you guys, if you're looking for a small little item, go to your local floor shop. They usually have all those supplies. And if you just ask them nicely and saying you just want to purchase like a foot of wire because you want to, most likely they will probably give you a small snippet of it to, for you to like test because you just need like, like half a foot. So little. So little. <laughs> you reuse it over and over again. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. Um, so I would just ask. And if not, they'll probably sell it for like really dirt cheap because it's not that expensive. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. The, that's, that's kind of what I've, what I've been working on. So yeah, list of tools of the trade, you know, favorite brands, favorite, you know, places to buy things. Cause I think right now, especially in the situation we're in right now with the pandemic, like everybody's just buying things on Amazon. Right. And like, that's great because you get that instant gratification of like, okay, I can get it in two days. And that's amazing. But there are some things that they sell on there that are like three times the price of what you would find anywhere else. And it's like, I'm, and the quality to, might not be that great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't want to pay $15 for a can of design master when I can get oh, it for $5, yeah. you know? Yeah, so sure. that's, that's kind of the other thing that's, that's tricky is like, I don't want to just send everybody to Amazon and be like, Oh, well you can buy it on Amazon. It's fine. For sure. You know? for sure. And then you I don't think get, we buy a lot of our stuff from Amazon actually. No, no. no. Um, so yeah. Like if you, if you guys have, you know, links or if anybody that's listening has links to, you know, different supplies that you use, you know, floral wire, floral tape, you know, anything like that, like put me on either on Facebook or you can email me and I'll get all that put together. So we'll have a list for everybody, you know, Perfect. And my idea with this whole like resource kind of guru a position in, in the group is to be able to find all this information that you know, everybody has, except for the newbie, you know, <laughs> and just well, like, you're doing sure. all the work for us you know? though, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it's everyone like, has links or everyone has like sources, but you're compiling them. That's work. Yeah. And that, yeah. that makes everything easier for us. Right. Mm-hmm. So exactly well, and- where can we find these resources? in the Facebook group. So as of right now, I don't have a live list. I'm still kind of working on putting it together, but for the book list and the list of the tutorials, those are actually going to be under the files tab in the group, uh, okay. in the group header. So there's a few different ones. So like there's the announcements and all that files is kind of towards the end. So if you click on that, you'll find all the ones that we have available. Perfect. And how can they find our Facebook group? What is it called? Uh, so it is called Paper Talk Community. Yes. So you just look up facebook.com slash group slash Paper Talk Community. You'll find it. So let's send this off with a question for you, Christina. So we're always interested in knowing what other people are doing when they're making paper flowers. So what are you drinking? And what are you watching? So usually I will drink water. Um, oh. or, 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 uh, You're so honest. Yeah. Unless it is like the weekend. If it's like Friday or Saturday, then usually I'm drinking some sort of wine or a hard fire cider. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, let's talk about water because there's so many types of water. Are you drinking tap water, bottled water, like seltzer Soda water? Soda stream or something? Yeah, or. <laughs> or LaCro just, or no, Perry. Can, <laughs> can we talk about bubbly and also water? Is it water brook? What is that? There's a new one from Austin, Texas that is so delicious. I forget what it's I called. Have no idea. I don't know. What do they do? Do they pump like carbonation to it or something? Or they use a hundred percent juice, but it's very little, oh, of course. I see. But it's they do carbonated water and it's oh. really mm-hmm. delicious. Interesting. No, no. Yeah. yeah. To to be completely honest, it's just filtered tap water. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Love it. (laughs) Hey, we take it for granted that we can just turn on the tap and drink the water. A lot of places can't. So good for you. Take advantage of that. So what are you watching? Do you watch anything? Uh, It really depends. Um, Most of the time, if I'm watching something, it's like a rerun of something that I've already seen a million times. So like friends or how I met your mother or, Mm. you know, things like that things that I don't have to pay a lot of attention to while I'm working Mm -hmm. um or like I'll throw on like a Marvel movie or Disney movie that I've seen a ton of times otherwise I'm just listening to music on Spotify while I work so that's nice too what music then do you listen to lately I've actually just kind of had the Hamilton soundtrack on loop (laughs) yes so good (laughs) I love it that's awesome well thank you so much Christina it was so much fun chatting with you and thank you so much for all the work that you do in our Facebook 
group and just helping our community. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I mean, I love, you know, being able to to do what I can to help, you know, progress people along, especially the, you know, the newer people that are a little lost. Um, <laughs> Because I, I was definitely there and I was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to buy. So being able to get that information and put it all together and just hand that off and be like, run, that. be yeah. free, you know. Uh, <laughs> it but, probably is that feeling that they're going to get is they finally feel like, oh, I know what to do. Like some, you know, it, it's nice to have a little bit of help. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So thank you so much, Christina. It's been a pleasure to finally meet you face to face. Hopefully yes. we will. I'm sure. Oh, now that you're in the main group, we're going to see each other a lot more and talk to each yeah. other a lot more. And yeah, I'm I'm so looking forward to you grow as an artist. I mean, I see your your face, your uh, website. It's beautiful. And your Etsy page. It's just the flowers. Yeah. And you guys, you're just starting out. So great things ahead yeah. for you. Great. Thank you. If you're looking for a way to support us, please hit subscribe and write us a review. We would appreciate it so much. You can also support us as a patron on patreon.com. Your contribution would help us continue to create great content for you and the paper flower community.